The information presented on this program is not intended to take the place of your personal physician's advice, and it is not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease. Discuss this information with your own physician or healthcare provider to determine what is right for you. Hey folks, Dr. Joe here. So glad you're with us today. Fun show today. We're gonna to talk about fake health foods. Foods that you think are healthy, but they're really not. So just because something is labeled as a health food or has a reputation as a health food, doesn't mean it is. So we're gonna kind of expose what's really going on in the world out there. Because so many people come to me and they'll say, well, Dr. Joe, I eat really well. I have a great diet. I eat this and this and this. And then I look at their diet and it's horrible. And so we're gonna break down some of the things that are going on. So for example, let's start with salads because that's an easy one. Everybody says, well, I have a salad every day, but Dr. Joe, I can't lose weight. Dr. Joe, I have a salad every day and I'm tired every day at lunch. And right after lunch, I wanna fall asleep. How many people do that? You wanna fall asleep right after lunch? A lot of you do. And the reason is lunch. I ask school teachers a lot when I give lectures, uh, when are your grades better, morning or afternoon for your kids? 100% of the time, teachers say what? Morning. What's the difference between a kid in the morning and a kid in the afternoon? Lunch. And so they're eating foods that are actually shutting down their, their metabolism, their brain function. And so let's talk about a salad. There's good salads and there's bad salads. Now, years ago, I was normal. I used to eat meat and dairy and soda and breads and everything else. And I remember I loved Caesar salad. I remember the first time I ever had a Caesar salad. I grew up really poor, so this wasn't something we had. And I went out to dinner, I had a date, and we met this girl's father at a restaurant and they ordered a Caesar salad and it came and they made it right at the side of the table and it was delicious. And so Caesar salad became one of my favorites. But then I started thinking, once I started learning about biochemistry and nutrition and brain function, what's in a Caesar salad? Well, what do we got in there? We got croutons, not a good idea. Cheese, I'm not a big fan of cheeses. Yeah, the anchovies, I'm not a big fan of fish either. I, I, I'm, a, I'm a vegan, in case it's your first show. Now, I'm not asking you to do that. I know that may be a little extreme for some of you. I'm not asking you to go vegan, but I'll give you reasons why I chose this lifestyle and you can decide what you want to do. So you've got raw eggs, which of course can cause salmonella and issues like that. So you got something that starts out with romaine lettuce, but then we add all this other stuff to it. To be honest with you, that's why it tastes so good. We add these foods that aren't necessarily good for you. And that's one thing with food. People would eat better if the bad food didn't taste so darn good. And I agree with you, I'm, I'm not arguing that point. So let's talk about maybe a better choice than a Caesar salad or any type of salad. Lettuce, awesome, uh, beans would be great, chickpeas are great, onions are fine, cucumbers, broccoli, uh, tomatoes, mushrooms, all fine. Then what do we do to it? Then we start adding cheese on it. And especially if you had like uh, processed cheese food, the yellow cheese, I always joke, you never see a yellow cow, you never see yellow milk, where did the yellow cheese come from? It's gotta be a dye that's added to it. So you start adding things like cheese and ham and other pieces of meat and bacon, and that's where you start ruining a perfectly good salad. And what happens is if you eat a lot of saturated fats, they can actually clump your red blood cells together. And when red blood cells clump together, you get tired. This is why if you ever eat a salad for lunch, a healthy salad, you, uh, you don't get tired afterwards. Have a cheese pizza with pepperoni, a lot of animal products, a lot of saturated fats. What happens? You wanna fall asleep. So you're not carrying oxygen through the body. Not a good thing. So when you make a salad, start thinking, what am I putting in my salad? If I put saturated fats into the salad, it's gonna clump my red blood cells together, I may get tired. Or maybe I could put beets in my salad. Now beets are high in nitrates. And nitrates convert into something called nitric oxide. Nitric oxide opens up your blood vessels. And when you open up your blood vessels, you have better circulation. And it's not just to your arms and your legs. How about your brain? Your brain needs oxygen and circulation. How about your reproductive organs? I'm keeping it clean, it's a family show. Your reproductive organs need circulation. And as we get older, the circulation to our whole body gets less. The blood vessels become weaker. They're not as flexible as they used to be. And when blood vessels become weak, they don't expand, so the blood pressure doesn't drop. Blood vessels expand, blood pressure drops. Blood vessels contract, blood pressure goes up. So you start taking foods that are high in nitrates, like beets, like arugula, basically green leafy vegetables really, but arugula has like 10 times the amount of nitrates as beets. If you don't know what that is, it's kind of like a lettuce. So if you make an arugula salad with beets on it, oh my gosh, 
Now you're getting all these vitamins and minerals and nutrients, and you're getting the nitrates to create nitric oxide, and you're going to get more energy. So what would life be like? Let's go back to fantasy world. What would life be like? We'll play some music, harp music in the background. If at the end of the day, you didn't want to fall asleep. How many people go home from work? You just, oh my God, I can't believe I got to drive home and it's a 20 minute, half hour, two hour ride. I'm exhausted. I just want to go home and go to bed. What does that do to you? You just work and sleep and work and sleep. How many people do that? I know a lot of you do. And so if you have more energy because you're eating better foods, you're going to actually have something called a social life. Some of you may have heard of this. It's a rare, hard to find thing. But imagine going home from work and having a date, spending time with your kids, going out with your friends, or just being awake. Wouldn't that be cool? And you can do that very easily by being careful what you have at lunch or dinner in this case. So you can do a good salad or you can do a bad salad. I want you to add something to your diet. I want you to add something called nutritional yeast. Nutritional yeast is something I add to every salad I have. It's spectacular. It's a yellow powder. It kind of tastes like, pop. it looks like powdered mashed potatoes, maybe has a cheddar cheese kind of flavor to it, a savory flavor. And it has something in it, a certain type of beta-glucan. Now, beta-glucan has been shown to help diabetics. And it's also shown to help your immune system. In fact, they've done studies where you can give a child a half a teaspoon of, of nutritional yeast, cost really expensive, about four cents, and you add it to a child's diet every day, reduce the risk of flu by about 25% and colds, cold and flu. And if they do get sick, it reduces the severity by 25 to 50%. So why wouldn't you be using four cents of nutritional yeast on every salad that you have? It's pretty cool. And it adds great flavor to it too. I add more than that because I like the flavor, but I know as long as I'm getting my quarter teaspoon or half teaspoon, I'm gonna do well. So add nutritional yeast to it. If you use raw organic apple cider vinegar as part of your salad dressing, raw organic apple cider vinegar, very beneficial to your health. It helps digestion, it has probiotics and prebiotics, it feeds the bacteria in your colon. It actually helps alkalize your system. Most of us eat bad foods, acid-forming foods, and those acid-forming foods are causing trauma to our body. Alkalizing the system helps the body function more efficiently. So you do raw organic apple cider vinegar as part of your salad dressing. And then you can use oils. Now, the less processed oils you eat, the better. Now, I know there's a lot of different camps on this. Make 80% of your diet come from fats, and you're going to do great. Well, you can do that, but it's usually not sustainable long-term. That's the ketogenic diet. Also, studies are coming out now that people that have done long-term ketogenic diets are increasing their risk of heart disease. So short-term to lose weight, sure, it's fine, but I don't recommend that for more than two months. The more processed oil you eat, the, well, the less you eat, the better you're going to be. So when I say processed oil, what does that mean? How about olive oil? How about coconut oil? How about avocado oil? So reduce the amount of oil that you take in. If you're gonna do oils, and I do some too, I'm Italian, I gotta use olive oil, I think. I, I don't know what happens. Just use less and make sure it's organic. Try to stay away from the processed oils, the vegetable oils, canola, uh, soybean oils. These are all high in omega-6 fatty acids. And omega-6 fatty acids increase inflammation, and every disease known to man has an inflammatory component. So do the quality oils, the good oils, and just kind of cut back a little bit on them, okay? So you can do a healthy salad, you can do a non-healthy salad. In the first book that I wrote, it's called Eating Right for the Health of It, we have a whole chapter on salad dressings. Couldn't make it easier for you. And here's a bonus for you, don't tell everybody. You're gonna save a ton of money. I see people at work, and I get in my offices, I'm here at the studio, and some folks bring their own lunch, which is great, and other people are eating out every day. And look at the healthy people. The healthy ones, the ones that are thin, the ones that are fit, they usually either bring their own lunch or they're eating healthy foods. The ones that aren't so healthy, it's pretty obvious what they're having for lunch. They're spending $10, $15 for lunch. They feel miserable, they're tired all the time, maybe they're overweight, maybe they're sick. So you'll save money, feel better, look good, slow down the aging process. Why wouldn't you do this? Makes no sense. And to make a salad, this is how long it takes. I buy a, a big, uh, it's called a clamshell of organic uh, greens, less than $4. I can make five, six, seven salads out of it, depending on what I add to it. I'll break that out. I'll put it in there. I'll put some organic uh, sesame seeds sometimes on it. I'll take sesame seeds and uh, put them in a dry frying pan and just toast them. Keep flipping them until they turn a little brown. Add those toasted sesame seeds to your salad. Guess what? Tastes like bacon. Put some sesame seeds on there. Then you add the lettuce. Then you add an apple cider vinegar dressing. Uh, again, my book has a ton of recipes in it. Then you could add sunflower seeds if you want to, organic sunflower seeds. Then you add your nutritional yeast. 
what's going to happen is you're going to find that costs, let me think how much that would even cost, maybe a dollar, let's say two dollars, let's get crazy. Put it in a glass container, because I don't like plastics, because plastics can scrape and get toxic chemicals in the food. You put it in a glass container, you bring it to work, I add the salad dressing when I get to work or at lunchtime, and I eat it. You don't need more food, you need better food. And so when you're eating better food, you have more energy, you save money, and you're going to eat a lot less food. And when you eat a lot less foods, you're going to feel better and you're going to lose weight. So remember, when you're hungry, you're not hungry for food, you're hungry for nutrition. So salads, think about that. That can be a fake health food. A lot of people think they're doing well with salads and they're not, okay? Smoothies, this is another one that drives me nuts. People say, well, Dr. Joe, I have a smoothie every single day. I said, that's great, what's in it? Well, let me tell you what's in it. They had some frozen fruit, awesome, love that, that's great. And then they'll add milk, not a big fan of milk. I would use coconut milk, ramen milk, okay. And they may add frozen sweetened fruit, which is loaded with what? Sugar, or even worse, high fructose corn syrup, or even worse, artificial sweeteners. And if you go to a smoothie place, a lot of them, the, the fruit that they use is all sweetened with sugar or high fructose corn syrup. Not a healthy food anymore. So you're taking something that essentially is just a candy bar that's liquefied and eating it. Now, if you want to make your own smoothies, this is how we do it. It's real simple. You uh, take some coconut milk, ramen milk, frozen fruit. I always use organic bananas. Uh, bananas work nice because a half a frozen banana makes it creamy and smooth, kind of like a milkshake then. And the banana adds that consistency. Berries are great because they're lower in sugar, but make sure they're just organic berries, uh, strawberries, blueberries, blackberries. And then I add Dr. Joe's Super Greens and Dr. Joe's Essential Source to my smoothies because it's the minimum amount of nutrients you need every single day. I recently did a, a spot on a, a major television show, and the topic was hangover remedies. They asked me about hangover remedies. It was kind of funny. And one of the things that they recommend is you take B vitamins, you take these uh, children's drinks that have the nutrients in it. And I said, well, if you just take super greens and essential source, that's going to give you all the nutrients you need without all the downside to it. So not saying you should get hangovers. The best way to avoid a hangover is don't get a hangover. But you had super greens and essential source every single day, minimum amount of nutrients. They're on my website, drjoe.com. And then you can add, if you want to, some toasted almonds to it or regular almonds to it. Just add it on top if you want to make it pretty. That's a smoothie. And in fact, if you follow me on Instagram, uh, we send out a lot of pictures of smoothies on a regular basis using the Super Greens, the essential source. So if you follow me on Instagram, you'll get a lot of that information there. But just be careful, because in a day, in a perfect world, you're going to have about 40 grams of net carbs. Now, what the heck is a net carb? Take the amount of carbs you eat in a day, subtract the amount of fiber you eat in a day. So let's assume I have 80 grams of carbs. Because everybody's talking about low carb, low carb. All right, I eat 80 grams of carb. But I had 50 grams of fiber. My net carbs are only 30 grams. So I didn't have that, that you know, 80 grams of carbs. I had 30 grams of carbs, net carbs. And so if you go, as you eat more carbs, you gotta eat more fiber. There comes in the salad that we just talked about, which essentially could have zero carbs if you do it right, or almost zero carbs. But the fiber is gonna offset it. So with smoothies, just be careful. You may just be eating sugar water and thinking, why am I not losing weight? Why am I tired all the time? Why am I sick all the time? You're just getting too much sugar. So be careful. Smoothies can be one of those fake health foods uh, that we're talking about. Energy bars. This is another kicker. And I see this all the time. Dr. Joe, I have this energy bar and it's really good for me and I eat four of them a day. Read the ingredients. First look at the carbs. Okay, it's a real simple thing. Because the carbs, if you're not getting net carbs, you got to remember the net carbs, you, you may be just getting a bunch of sugar. It really, a lot of times, just candy in a, in a bar form. And then sometimes they'll add artificial sweeteners. Not a big fan of artificial sweeteners. If you listened to my shows before, you know I'm not a big fan of artificial sweeteners. Um, some candy bars can have up to 500 calories. I mean, that's a lot of calories. If you're on a 1,500-calorie diet a day or 2,000 calories, which is what maybe you should be around taking every day, is one, one third to one fourth of your calories right there in a bar. Not a good idea. And you're not going to be satisfied. A few bites, it's gone. You're not going to feel full. You're going to want to eat more food. And again, sugar makes you hungry. Remember that. So be careful with these energy bars because that could be a big scam as well. So what do you do? Well, you could always uh, get your own, make your own if you want to. You want to get really crazy. Or, to go, you know, if you go to my website, drjoe.com, um, you can listen to a, uh, I did a video called The Seven Deadly Sins of Nutrition. You could watch that. That's kind of step one as to what to eat and what not, what not to eat. Step two, I did an audio called, So What Can I Eat? And you can get that on my website, it's no charge. And that's a good starting point. A lot of you have done that already, because I know a lot of you regular listeners or, or viewers. 
but if you're new to it, so what, seven deadly sins of nutrition, so what can I eat? And if you do that, that's your starting point. That's step one to get you onto this uh, bandwagon, so to speak. Uh, I would recommend the Super Greens, the essential source, of course, which would be great, uh, because the Super Greens, the essential source, minimum amount of nutrients you should get every day. And they're two powders, they're relatively inexpensive, in fact, really inexpensive. Um, you, for a, a fancy coffee, you can get like two or three days supply of Super Greens and Essential Source for one coffee. So you got the money, I promise you. It's about just over $2 a day. And if you start there, because everybody says, what's the starting point, Dr. Joe? I don't know if I'm ready to go crazy like this. This is a wonderful starting point. And then if you get the digestive system working so you can absorb your nutrients, that's another step. How many people have acid reflux? Raise your hand. Heartburn, gas, bloating, diarrhea, constipation. One of my bosses uh, just had a part of his esophagus removed because he had acid reflux. It became cancerous. One of my other bosses is getting the early signs of it. And so what we do in our offices is we can gently, if you're a candidate for the treatment, we gently pull the stomach down away from the diaphragm. If the stomach is pushed up into the diaphragm, the acid can come up into your esophagus or your throat, and that can cause a lot of irritation. Pull the stomach down, it's a pretty easy fix for some folks. Uh, so that's step number two. And then step number three, as you're working toward good health, is you have to have a normally functioning nervous system. My offices, we have offices in the Atlanta area, Marietta, Duluth, and Stockbridge. We have a team of chiropractors, and we work on making sure the bones and the body are lined up. Because so many people have physical health care problems, not chemical. What do I mean by that? You might have a pinched nerve causing neck pain, back pain, shoulder pain, headaches, numbness, tingling. We can take medication for that. I'm not against that. If I have pain, I'm going to take medication. But then I want to find out why I have the pain. What's my next step? And so from a chiropractic standpoint, we look to realign everything. So that's an easy fix in most cases. So if you have pain, folks, stop suffering needlessly. So many of you are suffering and you can't figure out why. Come see us. If you're in the Atlanta area, Marietta, Duluth, and Stockbridge, go to my website, drjoe.com, real simple, D-R-J-O-E, and you can set up an appointment online. You can give us a call. We would love to be your doctors. Let's set up a time to talk. And if you have something I think we can help, we'll tell you. If it's something we don't think we can help, we're gonna tell you that too. I don't wanna waste your time, I don't wanna waste my time. If you're serious about wanting to get well, for you, your friends, your family, and your children, please folks, consider your children, bring them into our office, drjoe.com, make an appointment, we'd love to see them. Because our, our phrase is, naturally we wanna get you well and keep you well. So we wanna get the nervous system working, digestive system working, and good nutrition. So we're talking about uh, uh, energy bars, that's where we left off, and a lot of times they'll, they'll have, um, Chemicals added to it, even trail mix. You think, well, trail mix might be a better choice, but they may have fruit in it. Check the fruit. Make sure it doesn't have something in it called sulfites. Now, I know we just said sulfites earlier, convert into, uh, nitrates convert into nitric oxide. Sulfites are not nitrates, it's a little different, but nitrates can become carcinogenic just like sulfites can become carcinogenic. So if you have dried fruit, whether it's dried fruit or a trail mix, and it's real pretty, and it's soft, and it's mushy, and it's chewy, that usually means they have sulfites in it. Dried fruit should be ugly. Dried fruit dries out. It should be wrinkly and dried out. So read the ingredients. So if you're not doing an energy bar or one of these you know, fancy bars that can be actually bad for you, you might be thinking, well, Dr. Joe, I'm eating trail mix. Could be a good choice, but just make sure it doesn't have any sulfites in it. If it contains sulfites, it's off, it's off your list. Don't eat it. Because a lot of times people with sulfites can get sick from it, get headaches, not a big fan of the additives. And here's my rule on food, you may have heard it before. If you can't pronounce it, don't eat it. It's just that simple. So I want you to cut back on the foods, a lot of processed foods, packaged foods, and sulfites are one of the things you're gonna be looking for. I know you can pronounce that, but it's still not something you should be eating. All right, let's go on. Burritos. People think, well, I'm going to have a chicken burrito. It's better than a steak burrito. So chicken is way better than steak. So I'm going to have a chicken burrito. <sighs> About 1,000 calories. Lots of saturated fats, depending on the size of the burrito, of course. Cheese, sour cream. Uh, you get a fat jumbo tortilla made with wheat. A lot of people have wheat sensitivities. Wheat contains a protein called, uh, it's a lectin called gluten. Gluten, wheat gluten contains gliadin and glutenin. And gliadin and glutenin can irritate your bowels and cause an inflammatory reaction. So now we got a problem. The chicken, if you're going to do chicken or any animal products, I recommend organic only. And my concern is that if it's not organic, it might contain antibiotics, pesticides, herbicides. It's fed genetically modified foods, which is sprayed with pesticides um, and, and, and weed killers. So I'm not a big fan 
of you eating things that aren't, uh, animal products especially, that aren't organic. And if you're going to do the wrap around it, not a good idea. So here's a better choice. Instead of getting a chicken burrito or a steak burrito, get a bowl. Now, years ago, we didn't have bowls. Everything was wrapped. But as we got more modernized and shows like this become more and more popular, a lot of places are now having bowls. And a bowl is real simple. It's all the ingredients on the inside without the wrap. So guess what? You just save the wheat and the calories and it can cause bloating and gas and constipation because that wheat doesn't have a lot of fiber in it. It's white flour. And so you can do a bowl, real simple. And how about this? Instead of doing chicken, how about we do a bean bowl? They call it a vegetarian bowl. I know some people get scared when I say the V word around them. But you do a vegetarian bowl. And you can do beans, you can do black beans and, and pinto beans, and you can do rice. Uh, now, if you are a vegetarian, be careful. A lot of Mexican restaurants will do chicken broth in their rice. And many times that chicken broth contains monosodium glutamate. Again, not just the chicken if you're a vegetarian, but the monosodium glutamate, we did a show on this a couple of weeks ago, the glutamic acid gets into the cells and can cause the nerve cells to fire faster than they're supposed to. And it can affect blood pressure, it can break brain function. Number one side effect is headaches. So be careful with excess amounts of monosodium glutamate. So if you're gonna do rice, even if you're not a vegetarian, ask if it has chicken broth. And if it does, get the one that doesn't. They usually have two types, so that, that's an easy fix right there. Do guacamole instead of sour cream. Much better choice. You can do salsas, lettuce, tomatoes, uh, cucumbers, olives, cilantro. Cilantro, side note, can actually help get heavy metals out of your system. How cool is that? If you have mercury and aluminum in your body, cilantro actually changes the charge, the molecular charge of the heavy metals that's bond to the cells and can help flush it out of your system. So eat lots of cilantro, is what I'm telling you. So that's a much better choice. And guess what? At the end of the day, if I have a chicken burrito, I'm going to be full. Chicken bowl, of course, I hope. You're going to have a bowl with beans and rice and guacamole and cilantro and everything else, and you're going to be full. So the results are the same. You end up full. Yet you've made a better choice than me because you have better nutrients in your food. And so what you think is a health food chicken burrito may not be. But here's the catch when it comes to Mexican food, and I hate to say this, those darn chips. How many people can eat one chip? I can't, okay? Because what happens is they're, they're, they're the perfect, uh, perfect storm, I know it's a, a used phrase, it's the perfect storm of pleasure. It's carbohydrates, fats, and salt. And when you fry them, you create these free radicals. Free radicals are like Pac-Man, they eat through things. So when you fry anything, and boy, does fry food taste good, doesn't it? When you fry these things, these free radicals get into the body, and they're the things that speed up the aging process. They're the things that eat away at your skin and break down collagen and make you look older. They, uh, they, uh, they make you tired. They can even lead to things like cancer. So chips, not a good idea. But you're thinking to yourself, but Dr. Joe, I'm not gonna give up my chips. I love my chips. That's the reason I go to Mexican restaurants. Negotiate with me on this. Six chips, that's it. Can I do it? You can do it, I promise you. So take six chips, send the rest of the chips back. Or, better yet, save the restaurant some money. You know what, I don't want a whole basket of chips, just bring me six. They'll look at you like you're crazy, but they'll bring you six chips. And then you can do whatever you want with those chips. You can dip them in salsa, you can dip them in guacamole, you can eat them plain, whatever you want, but just six, because here's the deal. If you start eating chips at the beginning of the meal, you're gonna fill up on chips and then you're full. If you eat it with the meal or at the end of the meal, you're not gonna to wanna to eat them anyway. See how easy that is? So we're cutting back the hydrogenated oil, the genetically modified corn, the, hydro the, the, the bad fats, the bad salt. There's good salt and there's bad salt, by the way. Good salt would be Himalayan salt or air dried sea salt. I know the Mexican restaurants aren't using that. So it's a real simple thing. If you're not willing to give up all the chips, just limit yourself to six. It's not that hard. So what we're talking about today, i got a lot more to talk about. We're going to have to go to a break pretty soon. We're talking about fake health foods, foods that you think are healthy, but they're not. And here's the other thing. As you get older, it's a lot harder for your body to process these fake foods or bad foods. When you're young, hey, I can drink a six-pack, I can have pizza, sleep for a few hours, go to work. can't do that anymore as you're getting older. So if you don't do that when you're young, you're going to be very happy when you get older that you're going to be, look a lot better, feel a lot better, and be biologically a lot younger than most of your friends. So I've got to go to break. A lot more to cover. We've got to cover sugar-free foods. Uh, these enhanced vitamin waters, are they really good? We're going to talk about that. 2% uh, milk, what that really means. Kind of a little scam there a little bit. Uh, I'm Dr. Joe Esposito. If you're just tuning in, we have chiropractic offices in Marietta, Duluth, and Stockbridge in the Atlanta area. 
If you'd like to become our patient, we would love to have you as our patient. So if you have neck pain, back pain, shoulder pain, headaches, numbness, tingling, if you've ever been in a car accident, here's the thing. If the car was damaged, you were damaged 100% of the time. And the longer you wait to come see us, the harder it's going to be to get well, and the insurance companies can be real, you know what, if you don't get in soon. So if you're sick and tired of being sick and tired, if you, you or somebody you know wants to get well, we want to get the nervous system working, digestive system working, and good nutrition. Go to my website, drjoe.com. You can make an appointment on the website or give us a call against drjoe.com. That's where my supplements are, too. Hey, don't go anywhere. I'm Dr. Joe Esposito. We're going to be right back. Hey, folks, Dr. Joe Esposito. So glad you're here today. Fun show today. We're talking about fake health foods, things that you think are healthy. Well, maybe you do, and, but they're not. And so I'm trying to kind of like expose this information to you so you can make better choices. And that's what it's all about, is just making better choices. It's not hard, it's easy. My rule on food is this, you have to eat anyway, why not eat good food? It's pretty simple, right? So we talked, uh, if, you miss, if you miss some of the show, by the way, you can always go to my website, drjoe.com. We have well over a thousand hours, I don't know how much we have now, it's well past that, of audio and video podcasts. And if you have a podcast service, look for For the Health of It. That's the name of the podcast on the podcast services, and you can get it there too. And then you can binge listen. Isn't that cool? Because so many people say to me, Dr. Joe, I listen to your podcast constantly. And it's funny, it's, and many times it's not people I would expect to be podcast listeners. We have folks that are a little older, like myself, who may not be as uh, hip and cool to technology. We have really young kids, which is really interesting uh, because normally health shows, that's not something that interests younger generation, but we have a huge following of the younger generation and they love it. So if you wanna get on board, be one of the cool kids, you can go to my website, drjoe.com, listen to the podcast, or if you have a podcast service, for the health of it. So let's continue on with foods, fake, fake health foods, sugar-free foods. If I had to pick one thing that I can teach you, it's artificial sweetener needs to be out of your diet. And the reason is this. Aspartame, that's a real popular artificial sweetener, breaks down to three components, aspartic acid, phenylalanine, and methyl esters. Aspartic acid is an excitotoxin to the brain. It causes the brain to fire faster than it's supposed to. And it can actually, just like glutamic acid, we talked about that earlier, monosodium glutamate, it can actually have adverse effects on the brain. And so a lot of people get headaches from artificial sweetener. They can have uh, uh, the brain firing faster than it's supposed to and it cause, cause neurological issues. Big issue. It also breaks down to phenylalanine, which if you have a condition called phenylketonuria, it, it, you can't process phenylalanine. It's an amino acid and that can cause a problem. And then it breaks down to methyl esters. Now, methyl esters is methanol. Methanol is wood alcohol. And this is an interesting little story. I'm going to go on a side note here. Uh, I was dating a gal a couple of years ago, and she came to me after a few months we were dating and confessed that she was a recovering alcoholic. And I'm fine with that. That's good for you for recovering. And she asked me to go to AA meeting. And I thought, okay, I'll go. Didn't realize that you don't take outsiders to an AA meeting on, on a regular basis. So I walked into the meeting. First of all, I saw five patients there. Three, three, five. Anyway, I saw a bunch of patients there. And of course, they wanted to know what I was doing at the AA meeting. So I saw a couple of celebrities there. Of course, you, you take a vow, you can't say who they are. But I was really surprised. People you'd never expect to be in AA. And we chatted for a while. And then I started noticing that skinny people at the meeting were drinking diet sodas. And I couldn't figure out why. So it kind of got me on my quest to find out why so many skinny people drinking diet sodas. Why not regular sodas? If you're doing it for the caffeine, do the regular sodas. They're drinking coffee, too. And I realized that methyl esters is methanol, and methanol is wood alcohol. So they were drinking very small amounts of alcohol every time they had a diet soda. And many of you may be or know somebody who's a recovering alcoholic, and a lot of them drink artificial sweeteners. That's why. And so I went to the AA director, and I said, listen, I need to talk. I need to talk to you pe the people at the meetings uh, to tell them what's going on. He said, well, you can't speak at an AA meeting because you're not an alcoholic. I rolled my eyes probably like you just did too, and said, so I have to be an alcoholic so I can become a recovering alcoholic so I can teach alcoholics. It made no sense to me, and I never got to speak. But here's my chance. I have a public forum now. So be careful with artificial sweeteners. I'm not a big fan of them at all. So you're thinking to yourself, well, I'm gonna, it's a no-brainer. I'm going to do this. But studies have shown that if you do artificial sweeteners, chances are you're going to eat more sugars later on. And people that use artificial sweeteners oftentimes gain weight not lose weight. So why are we doing the artificial sweeteners then? Now, good news is that more recently, I was, I like to think I helped lead this charge here, is there's a sweetener on the market called stevia. Now, stevia is a sweetener, it comes from a plant, 
Uh, it's 300 times sweeter than regular sugar, uh, has no side effects, has over 70 different nutrients in it. Now, don't take it as a supplement, but small amounts of nutrients. And if you ever go to a, a, a gardening store or one of the big box stores, in the spring, when I have the plants out, they now sell stevia plants. And look for it, it's got little leaves about the size of your, your pinky fingernail is the leaves. Look around, if nobody's watching, take a leaf and chew on it. You'll be amazed how sweet it is. You know, oh my gosh, I can't believe that much sweetness came out of this little leaf. And so stevia is one of my favorite sweeteners now. Uh, again, use it in moderation. You don't want to do douse it with everything. Uh, but you can use stevia. And the good news is if you like soda, we now have stevia sweetened sodas. And that's become very popular. And a lot of the big soda companies now have subsidiaries that actually produce stevia. And I won't use brand names on the air. But two of the major stevia sweeteners that you probably have heard of are owned by the two big soda companies. Interesting. I remember years ago, one of the big soda companies asked me to be a speaker. And they said, Dr. Joe, you're the number one health and wellness mo motivational speaker in the world. We'd love to have you come in and speak to our company. And I said to the lady on the phone, I said, did you dial the right number? You know who I am? You want me speaking to a soda company? And she said, no, absolutely. You're, you're, you're number one, man. You're, you're the best in the world and we want you. So I went there and I went into research and development and I said to them a couple of years ago, I said, why are you not using stevia as a sweetener? And I had all my research and I was ready to argue with the research and development. And they said to me, we don't have enough stevia in the world to meet our needs. That was not the answer I expected. Years later, fast forward, now there is enough stevia in the world to meet soda companies' needs. And that's why you're seeing a lot of countries segue out of the artificial sweeteners and use stevia in their sodas. Hasn't gotten to the U.S. yet, but it will. I'm going to put that in the Dr. Joe predicts column. And then I'll move over to the Dr. Joe's right column soon enough. That's a pretty big column, the Dr. Joe's right column, by the way. So sugar-free foods, be really, really careful with it. Um, if using sucralose, uh, that's a chlorinated hydrocarbon. We take sugar, go through a five-step process, add uh, chlorine to it, and that can stimulate your estrogen receptor sites. So be really careful with chlorinated hydrocarbons because it can um, kind of throw off your hormone balance a little bit. I'm not happy with that. So stevia would be a good choice. Um, some foods are uh, cut with maltodextrin. Some stevia is cut with maltodextrin because stevia by itself is so unbelievably sweet. So they'll use a maltodextrin. That's a corn deri derivative usually. And if they're using a genetically modified corn, not happy with that either. So if you can, try to do organic, uh, if you can, the organic corn, uh, the organic maltodextrin. That would be a much better choice. All right, let's talk about enhanced water because this is a biggie. People say, I got the vitamin water, Dr. Joe. <sighs> it's usually just expensive and it doesn't really do a lot. And some of them use artificial sweeteners, kind of segueing out of the artificial sweeteners. So just be careful with that. If you want to drink water, that's fine. I think it's great. Um, I like reverse osmosis water. Distilled water would be the best. Reverse osmosis water is the be next best choice. But here's the thing with those. They're not practical. I mean, how many people have a distiller in their house that can distill water and drink it? Eh, it's a little impractical. Reverse osmosis, usually a pretty big filter. It's got to go through a several step process. Um, a lot of water is wasted on that. You can get really good whole house filters. They're not cheap. It'll cost you a couple thousand dollars usually. But a good whole house filter that's going to filter out the chlorine, the fluorine, any chemicals, uh, that's what I would recommend. That's what I have in my house. And the reason is that it's not just the water you drink. If you take a hot shower, your pores open up, and you absorb the same amount of chlorine as eight glasses of water. And chlorine is, it's great. It, filled, it, it keeps the water clean, it keeps it free of uh, you know, pathogens. However, chlorine in concentration in the body gets into the colon and can act like an antibiotic and kill off the good bacteria. We don't want to kill good bacteria. So I would advise that you do filter out the chlorine, the fluoride, of course. Uh, we've talked about this in the past. Uh, it can affect your thyroid. It's a haloid. And when haloids get in your body, haloids are, look like iodine. They're, they're the same family as iodine. They can block up your thyroid and prevent you from absorbing iodine properly. Oh, so it can have an adverse effect on your thyroid. So get a good filter. I strongly recommend that. I think it's a good idea. Uh, a lot of times they have zero calories. They have up to 125 calories. Um, you, and many times they may use synthetic supplements. Now, if you've heard me do my talks on supplements, I'm not a big fan of synthetic supplements. I like whole food non-synthetic supplements. Now, whole food means it's, a whole, it's as little processed as possible. Uh, I have two supplements, Dr. Joe's Super Greens and Dr. Joe's Essential Source. I take those every day. Now, on busy days, if I'm doing a bunch of radio shows or TV shows or lectures or flying, 
uh, see a lot of patients, I will go ahead and take a double dose of some in the morning, some in the afternoon. It's two powder there's scoops. I take a scoop of each. They're powders. Mix it up with some coconut milk or almond milk. Drink it. The minimum amount of nutrients you should get every day. Relatively inexpensive. They taste great. Uh, if you want a vitamin water, just drink that. And it also has a complete multivitamin in it, non-synthetic supplements in there, prebiotics, probiotics, digestive enzymes, uh, like I said, complete multivitamin, good source of omega-3 fatty acids, um, has iodine in it. Most of us are deficient in iodine. So it's a real simple, easy fix, and it's on the website, drjoe.com. If you can eat solid foods, you can take it. For children, small children just getting into solid foods, you may not use a whole scoop, maybe use a quarter scoop. You can mix it with coconut milk, frozen banana, make ice cream with it. Unbelievable when you get kids, the, the jump start of giving them a good diet and good nutrition. It's just incredible what happens. And you'll be so happy that you made that choice. So the su supplements are on, and a bunch of other supplements too there. I was just talking about super greens and essential source today. Uh, those are on the website. Let's talk about milk, cow's milk. And it's funny, here's, there's, there's a lawsuit actually going on that the dairy farmers are saying you can't call things like almond milk and coconut milk because it's not milk. We have milk. And I thought, okay, well, it's a good argument. But here's the other thing too, and I, I'm, I believe in capitalism. I think everybody should make a living. But what's happening is dairy sales are plummeting. Cheese, dairy products are plummeting. And a lot of farmers are going out of business or they have this surplus milk that the government is buying from them. So the government is subsidizing it to produce something that we're not using which I don't know, that doesn't make a lot of sense to me, but I'm not a dairy farmer either. I'm not trying to pick on dairy farmers. I support everyone doing their, their profession. But the, 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 the desire for milk is dropping. And the, the rise in almond milk and coconut milk and hemp milk is just skyrocketing. So I'm really pleased to see that. And here's the thing too, I'm gonna play devil's advocate. If you're gonna do almond milk, it's not a lot of almonds in there. Maybe just a few almonds are in every you know, little container of almond milk. It's not a health food. It's just a good substitute for something that I'm not a fan of that I don't think is good for you, which would be animal milk. So I, that's what I use. I like coconut milk too. Uh, people always say to me, which one do you use? I say the one that's on sale. It's a pretty easy, easy decision for me. Uh, I like them both, coconut milk, almond milk, health milk, cashew milk they have. Uh, uh, gosh, what else? Uh, soy milk, not a big fan of soy milk, maybe hard to digest. Soybeans can be a little hard to digest sometimes. Uh, but there's so many other options right now that the milk's, milk's changing. But here's, here's the thing, 2% milk sounds better than whole milk, right? It's gotta be 2%, it's 2% of milk, right? Well, not really. Whole milk has 3.25% fat. Reduced fat is 2%. So how much is that? That's only less than half the fat of whole milk would be reduced fat milk. So it's really not a whole lot. And people think, well, it's only 2%, that's great. Well, whole milk is only 3.25%. So it's a little bit of change. 150 calories in whole milk, 130 calories in 2%. Really not that big a deal. I don't drink milk, but if I was gonna drink milk, I'd drink the whole milk. From what I remember, it's been a long time, it tastes better. And then skim milk is non-fat, 80 calories. Uh, so just be careful with that. Make sure you make better choices when it comes to your milks. A lot of people have digestive issues with milk. Number one food allergen is dairy. Number two food allergen is wheat. So what I tell people when they have aller allergy issues, skin, skin issues, a lot of times skin issues are related to the liver, which can be related to the diet. I said, let's try this. Let's cut out wheat and let's cut out dairy products. Give me two months, give me eight weeks. See what happens. If I'm wrong, I'm wrong, I blew it. But if I'm right, which I usually am, then you can make your decision. And almost everyone, I don't, I don't think I've ever had anyone in 34 years, 34 years I've been in practice come back and tell me anything differently. Dr. Joe, it's amazing. I feel so much better when I gave up my wheat and my dairy products. I can't tell you, thank you, thank you, thank you. And people lose weight and they feel better and they have more energy and their love life improves. And if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. So what, it didn't cost you anything. You gave an experiment, you proved me wrong. But I doubt you will, but give it a shot. And if you wanna go back to your old ways, you can. And here's the other thing too. When people go back to their old ways, they say, oh my gosh, I didn't realize how good I was feeling. When people start taking Dr. Joe's Super Greens and Dr. Joe's Essential Source, and then they come off it. Either they, they, they forget to reorder, and you can reorder, you can put it on automatic reorder right on the website, you save a couple of bucks too, and just put it on automatic reorder, and this way you know you're taking it. If you're not taking it, another shipment comes in, oh, I forgot to take it. And if they stop, start taking it and then stop, and then they come back and they say, oh my gosh, I didn't realize how good I felt. Same thing with chiropractic care. I see that all the time. Patients come in, they start feeling better, life gets in the way, they start missing appointments. A couple of weeks, a couple of months, sometimes a couple of years later, they come back in and go, oh my gosh, Dr. Joe, I didn't realize how great I felt 
when I was under chiropractic care. Not only was my acute pain gone, headaches, neck pain, back pain, shoulder pain, but I just had more energy and my body felt better. I was looser and I slept better. I was better at work. A lot of athletes, they don't use chiropractic care for pain. They use it for performance because if their body is lined up and, and working better, they're going to perform better. So why shouldn't you have that benefit? So that's the thing when you start cutting things out, the bad stuff like milk, and then put it back in, you'll see how bad you feel. When you start cutting out the good stuff, you start to feel bad again. And you'll say, wow, you were absolutely right. I'm not lying to you. I have no benefit to lie to you. So if you want to get healthy, I recommend a normally functioning nervous system, a normally functioning digestive system, and good nutrition. Not hard to do. If you'd like to make an appointment to come see us, we have offices in the Atlanta area, Marietta, Duluth, and Stockbridge. Go to my website, drjoe.com, and we'll set you up a time to come see us, and we'll see if something we can help. If you have a condition, acid reflux, heartburn, neck pain, back pain, you've ever been in a car accident, the sooner you get to us, the better. Trust me on this one. If the car was damaged, you were damaged. That's undeniable fact for, in my offices. Come see us. We'll get you set up as soon as possible. Bring your friends, bring your family, bring your kids. Because kids, if they're straight, they grow straight. If they're crooked, they grow crooked. It's not hard to figure that one out. But you can set up an appointment right away, drjoe.com, and you can do it online or call us, and we'd love to get you set up as soon as possible. The supplements we talk about is a bunch of other supplements, B vitamins, digestive enzymes, a, a, a wellness booster, which helps keep your immune system strong, a seasonal tonic. I take that if I start getting a little hint of a cold or a flu. Uh, in fact, one of my secretaries just came the other day, and she said, Dr. Joe, you saved me the other day again. And I said, I wasn't even here. I was out of town lecturing. What happened? And she said, I started feeling a little scratchy throat. I, I, I was taking the wellness booster, and then I started taking the, the seasonal tonic. She goes, within a day, perfectly fine. And she's an interesting case. Uh, she has cystic fibrosis, and she had a lung transplant. So she's got to be real careful not to get sick. And so she, she says, all my life, ever since my lung transplant, I would get sick. I'd be wiped out for weeks. She goes, now, solve the problem. But anyway, all the supplements are on the website, drjoe.com. If you have any questions, you can always send them to me through the website. I'm more than happy to answer your questions. And if you're not within the Atlanta area where my offices are, we can always do a phone consultation or we can do a Skype consultation if we need to. But again, drjoe.com. <sighs> so much to cover. All right, this gets me. When I was a kid, I didn't see these fancy coffee drinks. They didn't exist. And then suddenly these, they popped up. And, and every now and then you see one now, of course, there's fancy coffee shops. On, like, I, I think in New York City, I saw two right across the street from each other, or three, whatever. It was crazy. And you, the general public, are spending a ton of money on it. Good for those companies. Capitalism at its finest. But make better choices. Let's assume you can do a milk latte. I know it's uh, tempting. You choose reduced fat milk, and you're going to reward yourself because you use the reduced fat milk. Remember, we just talked about that. It's really not a big difference. And then you put whipped cream on top. Mm. Santa Maria, you don't listen. That trade-off, even if you do that, adds about 580 calories and 15 grams of saturated fats to a 20-ounce white chocolate mocha. Wow. Once again, 1,500 calories a day, 2,000 calories a day of quality calories is all you need. And you're knocking out 580 in a, in a coffee. That's not a meal. It's not going to fill you up. It doesn't have any nutrients in it, really. So you're not going to feel full. So you've got to be careful with that. Just so you know, that's more than a quarter pounder with cheese. You say, I'm not going to eat a quarter pounder with cheese, Dr. Joe. That's horrible. That's junk food. But I'm going to have my uh, whipped cream topped reduced fat milk latte. Going to be an issue. Now, if you're trying to come off your coffee, I think you should, by the way. It's one of what I call my seven deadly sins. I negotiate, by the way, when I, when I, if you watch that video on my website, drjoe.com, we talk about the seven deadly sins, alcohol, meat, sugar, dairy, coffee, soda, and artificial sweetener. I know, that's your whole diet. Don't yell at me, I have answers. And then I negotiate each one of them with you. So if you listen to the video, it's, it, it, watch the video uh, and you can see it there. And I negotiate each one with you. So if you're gonna do coffee and you wanna come off the coffee, number one, coffee is an acid. And when you put a lot of acid in your body, your body uses calcium and other minerals to neutralize the acid. So you gotta be careful with that. Also, a lot of commercial coffees are sprayed with pesticides. So you might wanna consider going to an organic coffee if you can. So here's a step down, how to get off coffee. And in my first book, Eating Right for the Health of It, we have a chapter on kicking the habit, how to get off the coffee. Here's how we do it. Go from coffee, whatever you're drinking, try to do decaf. Try to, uh, organic, regular to organic decaf. It still has caffeine in it, by the way. If you don't know what the term decaf means, decaf means less, cough, less caffeine than the original. Can't make it any easier than that, can we? So if your original has a lot of caffeine in it and we take some out, we call it decaf. So a lot of these fancy schmancy uh, coffee shops that you go to, 
the decaf has less caffeine than the regular, but the regular already had a supercharge of caffeine to begin with. That's why it tastes so good. If you truly took all the caffeine out of a coffee, it would have no flavor. So you have to have some coffee left in, some caffeine left in the decaf. So if you go from regular to decaf, that's a very good choice. Organic, of course. If you can't do that, because what happens is coffee, uh, caffeine gets into your brain, and caffeine looks like a chemical in your brain called adenosine. Adenosine is a chemical that's released in your brain. It's absorbed by your brain at a place called adenosine receptor sites, and it makes you tired. This is why you get tired. Adenosine is released, adenosine receptor sites absorb it, you start to get tired. Caffeine blocks up your adenosine receptor sites. So now you can't absorb the adenosine, and so not only does it stimulate your nervous system, it prevents you from getting tired. That's why coffee gives you a rush. But your brain is smarter than you. You start doing coffee, blocking up the adenosine receptor sites, the brain says, wait a minute, I gotta rest. What can I do? I'm gonna produce more adenosine receptor sites. So then you need more coffee. So what happened was you started with one cup of coffee, then you need two, then you need four, then you need six. Your body's fighting you. Your body's trying to absorb adenosine to get tired, and you're saying, no, I'm gonna block up adenosine receptor sites. It goes back and forth. So to come off coffee, when you stop it, that's one of the reasons you get a headache. In my first book, I want you to put a cup of coffee in front of you, organic, plain old coffee, no cream, no sugar, no lattes, and take one tablespoon every hour. If you're really addicted, you might need two tablespoons. That's gonna give you just enough caffeine to allow the body to start to heal, the brain to start to heal with the adenosine. And then after about three or four days, most people are off their coffee. So if you can do regular coffee to decaf, great. Then go to something called mate. Mate is a tea, it's, I think it's the national tea of Brazil? Anywhere, somewhere in South America. Um, but mate is a tea that has something called mateine, which is essentially caffeine. It's a step down, okay? So it's a good way to kind of start to come off your coffee and see if you could start to switch from that and you kind of get off your, your, your hook on coffee. Then you can step down to black tea then green tea and try to get yourself off it. But here's the thing, why are you drinking coffee? I don't even like it. I try it every now and then. I'll take a sip, and go, why would you do this? It's bitter, it's nasty. Well, I put cream in it, I put sugar in it. Mm. Okay, I don't know why you gotta doctor something up. But if you're gonna do coffee, you can add Dr. Joe's super greens to it because that'll alkalize some of the acid and make it a little better. There's a, I don't know if it's a brand name, it's called Bio Coffee. Um, and they add spirulina to it, which Dr. Joe's Supergreens is spirulina, chlorella, and wheatgrass. And so you can alkalize some of, your, some of your coffee with that. Just possible start for you. I'm trying to help you out here, folks. So you can do it that way. And then you can step down. But once you start eating good, once you get your nervous system working properly, once you get your digestive system working properly, I promise you, you're gonna have the energy that you're desiring and that you're trying to get from the coffee. So if you can get the nervous system working, digestive system working, and your nutrition straightened out, chances are you're gonna have more energy you know what to do with, and you're not gonna need that coffee anyway. So you're gonna save a ton of money. And a lot of folks tell me all the time, Dr. Joe, don't ever stop making Dr. Joe Super Greens an essential source. And I always ask why, and the response is interesting. Some people say, I can't afford not to take it. So what do you mean? When I take it, I, have, I, I eat less food. And so I'm saving money on food. Other people say it gives me so much energy and may take a couple of days or weeks to get into your system. So don't take it one day. Oh, it didn't work. Got to build up this stuff. And I say, Doc, I'm saving so much money on coffee that I'm buying the Super Greens Essential Source for my friends, for my family. And I still make money at the end. So it's pretty good stuff, the Super Greens Essential Source. And I'd recommend you try it. It's on the website, drjoe.com. And that's another way to help get you off your coffee. It's an addiction, folks. An addiction by definition is you're doing something that adversely affects your lifestyle or your life. And coffee has an adverse effect. So if you wanna go out and have some tea, great. If you really wanna get crazy, you can make some ginger tea. Uh, ginger tea, ginger is an anti-inflammatory. Uh, it's actually good for you. It helps with circulation. It's also an aphrodisiac, so be careful. I don't wanna get blamed for anything when I tell you to do ginger tea. But there's so many different types of tea. There's a, there's a slippery elm tea for throat. I drink a lot of that in the winter because I speak a lot. And I, I see a lot of my colleagues in uh, radio and television do that as well. So I'm glad that's kind of caught on. And so there's a lot of different things you can do. Uh, but if you go to my website, drjoe.com, I'm running out of time, I got plenty more to talk about. Uh, you can go to my website, we have over a thousand hours of podcast audio and video. If you have a podcast service, it's called For the Health of It is the name of this podcast, you can get it there. We wanna get you well and keep you well. If you have questions, and I have a blog there too, you can read my articles, see all, all the supplements are there. 
Go to my website, drjoe.com. You can send us questions. I'm more than happy to answer your questions because I want to help you out. And if you want to make an appointment to come see us, we have offices in the Atlanta area, Marietta, Duluth, and Stockbridge. We would love to be your doctor. So go to the website, drjoe.com, and you can book an appointment right online. If for some reason there's a problem, a question, if your time slot is filled, it'll kind of tell you you, you, you got denied. We already have patients that day. Call us. Many times we can jiggle the schedule around if we need to to make it work for you. But stop suffering. People with neck pain, back pain, shoulder pain, neck pain, car accident victims, digestive issues, uh, nutritional issues. The biggest complaint I get, and I've been doing this for 34 years, is why didn't I do this sooner? Why did I wait so long? So again, go to the website with any questions, make an appointment, get the supplements, drjoe.com. Folks, I'm Dr. Joe Esposito. Thanks for tuning in. We'll catch you next time.